Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware. We can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today I'm going to be doing something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and that is make homemade yeast rolls. And I'm going to make them in my cast iron cookware. And I'll show you how I did it coming right up. As I shared a while ago, we're going to be making homemade yeast rolls, and we're going to be making them in cast iron. And I'm going to be using my Cracker Barrel Mini Cake Pans. These are not exactly really old vintage, but they are kind of old because they have the older logo. And these here, I believe they were made by Lodge for Cracker Barrel. And they're really nice little mini pans, and they're great for muffins. They're also great for pineapple upside down cake because the pineapple slices fit perfectly in each cup. Of course, you can make cornbread and there's all kinds of things you can make in them. But today we're going to be making yeast rolls. And we're going to go ahead and start with our ingredients. Now, I don't have a stand mixer, so I'm going to need this bread by hand. And um, I've already had a couple experiences of failures. So if you're planning on doing this recipe and you've never made bread before, I would suggest go ahead and do with a half size recipe. Just cut everything in half. That way if you mess up, you haven't messed up as much. Now you don't have to use a cake pan. You can use a just a, a cast iron skillet if you'd like. You can also use a cookie sheet. Yeah, of course it won't be cast iron, but you can also use a cookie sheet or any other kind of sheet that you like to use. But I'm going to use cast iron because I'm kind of partial to it. So let's get started. Now our first ingredient is going to be bread flour. This is not all-purpose flour. It's not self-rising flour, but bread flour. The reason why I'm using that, I've tried the all-purpose and I've tried the self-rising and it's not near as good and I really made some boo-boos with it. Bread flour has a higher protein which causes it to be able to be stretched a little more. So by all means, use bread flour. You will be happy that you did. So we're gonna start off here with four cups of bread flour. But before we do that, we have one and a third cup of lukewarm water. And you really want the water to be lukewarm. You don't want it to be less than 105 or more than 115 degrees. That way your yeast will be able to bloom. And we're gonna be adding two teaspoons of dry active yeast. You can use the packets. We're going to be adding two teaspoons of sugar. Probably should have put the sugar in first, but I don't think it really matters. We're going to stir this around. Now we're going to watch it for about seven minutes and uh, wait for it to bloom. Now if your yeast does not bloom, throw it out. Your yeast is old and it's just dead. It's not going, to, not going to activate. Okay, we have four cups of bread flour. We're going to be adding one teaspoon of salt. We're going to be adding one third cup of granulated sugar. We're going to be adding two large eggs and five tablespoons of melted butter. And we're just going to combine this. Now it's going to look kind of shaggy until we get our yeast water in there. But just do your best to combine it. It'll start developing a little bit of a crumble look to it. Okay, it's been seven minutes and we have bubbly on the top. And we're going to go ahead and pour our yeast mixture in along with the water. We're just going to try to get the ingredients together. Right now the dough is really, really sticky. 
And if you tried to work with it now, you'd have to deal with it sticking. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this up and we're going to come back in about 15 minutes because it'll be a lot easier to work with once we get to that point. Okay, it's been 15 minutes and we're going to go ahead and get our dough out because it's going to be a lot easier to work with at this point. We're going to put us a little bit of sprinkling of flour down, not too much, because we'll probably be adding a little bit more as it goes. We're going to go ahead and turn our dough out onto our table. Okay, here we have it. Now we want to pat a little bit of flour on our hands. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, it's going to start off a little sticky. Now I don't have a bench scraper at the moment. So, and we're just going to fold it and knead it, fold it and knead it. Now it's a little sticky right now, but we're getting better. Stretch it out and fold it back on itself. Now it's going to be sticky for a little bit, but that'll get better in just a little bit. Okay, we had to we've added a little bit of flour to it to kind of take some of the stickiness out. We don't want to add too much flour because we'll throw off the texture. I'm really going to have to invest in a bench scraper. And there's a technique that I learned from this lady on YouTube is the heart method. You go this way, you fold it, and you go this way. You make a cylinder out of it, you fold it, and then you go this way. Now it's getting less sticky. Now we want to add some flour just to keep it from getting sticky, but we don't want to add a lot of flour. Or we'll wind up throwing the whole mixture off. And there is kind of a balance between the yeast, the sugar, and the dough that we want to try to keep. Now 
every now and then take and get your little flour on your hands. And do a dry wash. And if you see it's starting to get kind of tacky on your table, you can give it a little more, give it a little bit more flour. Now the window pane test is this. You pull you up a little bit of it and you stretch it. And if you can stretch it, and not tear. We're just about ready. We're gonna roll it a couple more times. And we got one more test that we're gonna do. Put a little bit of flour on your finger and it bounces back, you're ready. And I think we're about ready as we need to be for now. Now we're going to take our bowl we have some more melted butter and we're not going to worry about cleaning it. We're just going to Now we want to make sure that our dough is covered with oil. The reason why is we don't want it to dry out. At this point, there's several things you can do. You can turn your oven on for a couple of minutes and then just cut it off so it'll be just kind of lukewarm. Or you can take a bowl of boiled water that's really hot, set in your oven with it. Or you can place it in your microwave and put a hot, cup of water in there with it just to give it a little bit of warmth. Now we're not trying to cook it. We just want to get it in a warm place, not a cold place, so it can rise. And we're going to let that sit for one hour and it should double in size. So we'll check back on it in an hour. Okay, it's been an hour and we got our bread out of the oven where it was warm. Now the oven was not cut on. We just cut it on for a couple of minutes just to let it kind of knock the chill off, and then cut it off. We went ahead and put our pans in there too because when you're using cast iron, cast iron is usually a little cold and we don't want it cold because we're gonna be putting bread in it and we want it to rise. So we want them to be slightly warm. Now not, not hot, but slightly warm. So let's take a look at our bread. So we're gonna take our cellophane off and we'll see it's risen really nice. And we want to deflate the air. So we're gonna knock it down. And you see it goes down to the original size that we had. And it's just gonna pour right out. And we wanna fold it a couple times just to get the air completely out. Okay, now we want to cut it in 14 pieces that are kind of even. Now I don't have a pastry cutter, so I'm just going to cut it with a knife. We're going to cut it in half. And we want to get seven pieces out of this. 
So I'm gonna cut it just a little bit off center. This here will be three pieces and this will be four pieces. Now if you'd like, you can weigh these and get a more accurate, but we're not so much worried about accuracy. Now if a piece looks a little bit small like that one does, I'll take some off one of the biggest pieces and add to that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this. First of all, we're going to flatten it, get all the air out. And you hear it popping, kind of like popping chewing gum. And then we're going to roll it in on itself. So we get a nice little top. And we're going to put a little butter on the inside of these on the bottom. A little bit of melted butter. And we're going to do the other in the same way. Now you can use oil or you can use oven spray. But I'm going to choose to use butter. And we're going to take and go around it with our hands, kind of chopping it at the bottom as we spin it. And we'll tighten the top up. We'll have a taut surface. And then we'll pop this thing. And we'll just pop it in our, our pan. We have both of our pans. And we're going to put a little bit of butter on these. A little bit of melted butter. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to cover these up. Now, I don't want them being mashed with cellophane. I'm going to cover these up with a bowl. Okay, we're going to let these stay covered up for one hour until they double in size again. And then we'll put them in the oven. So right before the hour mark gets up, maybe in uh, 50 minutes, we'll go ahead and preheat our oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. But we'll come back and check them out in one hour. Okay, it's been an hour, so let's check out our bread and see what it looks like. Let's uncover carefully so we don't knock something crooked and smash our bread. Had a little touching right there, but... Oh yeah. Well, these things look really nice and puffy. Really, really have doubled in size. Okay, we got our oven preheated to 375 degrees. We're going to put them in for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, about 15 minutes, we're going to watch them close because we want to make sure they don't get burned and we want to make sure they get ready. So let's put them in and we'll check them out when they come out. Okay, they're out of the oven and they look great. Let's just pan down and take a look at them. We're going to slather them with some butter. And don't those look good? I'm telling you what, they are hot. They are hot. And delicious. I'm telling you what, they are very, very good. And I can't wait till we sit down at the table here in a few minutes with some honey butter and tear into them. Okay, I just want to give a recap and share a little bit about what I've learned while I was making these yeast rolls. 
One, the bottom was not quite as done as I'd like. Well, it was done, but it just didn't have a nice brown crust to it. Probably enough dough to do three of these instead of two. I would suggest maybe go ahead and make about 21 instead of 14. That'll make them a little bit smaller. That way they'll get done a little bit quicker all the way through and possibly even brown better on the bottom. I think another thing with cast iron, the temperature might have a little bit of a difference. Now, if you were putting these on a cookie sheet, 375 would probably be perfect. But I'm thinking that maybe 350 degrees may be even better. So I'm gonna keep trying and working on this particular recipe and hopefully I'll get it perfected. I'm sorry I didn't get it perfected before the video, but I'm a cook in training. So, so, but I hope that you've enjoyed it and I hope that you got something out of it. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise to keep more of them coming. If you would like, you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. And also, if you would like to support Cast Iron Cookware in a more monetary way, check out Cast Iron Cookware on Patreon. And I just want to say thank you for watching Cast Iron Cookware.